What's up guys? We are back with another Plunderlings review. We are taking a look at the latest and greatest and the final two figures in the initial assortment of Plunderlings. We've got the two fawns here today. So these guys went up for sale uh, at Big Bad Toy Store and at the Plunderlings website and sold out in record time. I'm pretty sure I made it just under the wire to get my order in because as soon as I was done, they were gone. Uh, these things went super crazy fast. I wasn't exactly surprised, but at the same time, was kind of a little surprised. Uh, but as we've seen, people are going nuts for them, and rightly so. I'm absolutely still in love with this line. So these are the two fawns. We've got uh, the red one is a grotto, and the green one here is flute. Uh, so they are unique among the other uh, plunderlings. So just like the drench are unique, these guys are unique as well because they are their own sort of subline in a way. We've got them here, however, in the standard box for the line. So they've got sort of like the shipping crate motif. You've got the big plunderling mouth with the window on the front. And then the back of the box has got a, a sort of artwork shot of the character and their name. And then on the tops, you've even got a window that showcases all the accessories. Uh, and then it lets light in as well if you want to keep the box uh, sealed. But just like all the others, you've got the ears inside as well. So you can pop those out and you can put them in the slots on the side if you want to turn your box into a full-on plunderling head. I still don't think I'm going to do that for any kind of long-term storage, but I love the idea behind making the box into its own little character on your shelf, basically. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package are Plunderlings Fawns. I have really been looking forward to getting more Plunderling stuff, and I thought we were going to have a really long wait, but it turned out to be a not so long wait, and I suppose now the really long wait begins for more stuff. But these are two that we didn't really get to in the Kickstarter. They didn't get all the way there, but they went ahead and made them anyway. And I am very thankful for that because now I can have what I can consider a complete wave one when it comes to plunderlings now. And we've got two in this particular sort of subset. So they're very similar to, in theory, they're very similar to the Kickstarter exclusive Drench. So they are unique. They are kind of a subclass of plunderlings in their own right. Whereas the Drench are sort of merman, these are fawns, and they are what you see. They have horned heads, and they have hooves, so they very much stand out from the crowd, while being almost exactly the same kind of figure. They just have basically different heads and feet, for the most part, and then they have unique accessories. So let's see what these guys can do, see how they move around. Uh, I'm going to pull Grotto aside, and we will use Flute as our guinea pig here. So if you have one of these, or if you've seen one of my other videos before, uh, you pretty much already know what to expect here. So the heads can look super far up. I mean, like literally as far as possible. They look all the way down. You've got tilt side to side, full rotation. The arms go out at the shoulders, and then they rotate. We've got our swiveling single jointed elbow, but it's a really deep cut. So you get basically 90 degrees because they've got really thick uh, forearms in, in contrast to their relatively small biceps. So you've got that. We've got hinges, which go, I mean, like as far as possible, really good range there and rotation at the wrist. We've got a torso cut for side to side, backwards, forward and rotation. Legs go out about this far. I do think that's probably the one area where I would say they are a little bit hindered compared to other figures, but it's really never posed a problem for me. Uh, they can't do the splits or anything, though. Kick forward, kick backwards, and then you've got a thigh twist. We've got our double-jointed knees. They go all the way back, basically. And then we've got our new ankles, new feet. So they are hooved creatures, but they still do everything you would expect. So they can hinge forward, and they can hinge backward just a little bit, and then they do have a rocker still. So they are basically regular feet. They just happen to look different. And I was almost worried that they might pose a stability problem, but that's definitely not the case. They have really big footprints uh, for this type of foot design. So I'm really happy with the way they move. Again, uh, no issues, no muss, no fuss when it comes to posing them around. If you have any experience with anything from Wave 1 other than these guys, you already know how well they move. And then as far as aesthetics go, it's another instance of if you've messed with one of these, you really know what the quality is going to be like on any of them because they are very, very consistent at the very least. They are very consistent from figure to figure. So the fawns are fully nude figures, so no clothing on these guys, uh, nothing to put on their heads, nothing on their heads out of the box, none of that kind of stuff. But they are very, very similar to all the other figures. So paint is really well done. Uh, sculpt is... Again, very similar because we've got a lot of shared parts here, but the new stuff I think is really nice. So the hooves, they differentiate them from the rest of the pack, so to speak. 
painted really well, sculpted really well. And again, they remind me of the Kickstarter exclusive Drench, where a lot of them are very familiar things, but the things that are unique really make the figure stand out from the rest of them. And then they've got uh, these new heads with the with the horns on them, which I absolutely love. They're not exactly the same either, because Grotto has kind of like a cream color to the horns, and Flute has a really, really white, like super bright white uh, color it is. And then they've got the earrings on all on their ears. So they've got six earrings that are painted in nice metallic gold. They, of course, come out of the box with the very devilish smiling head, because you know they're not, they're not up to anything except some sort of evil. They're definitely not up to anything good. And I really dig the paint applications on these guys, the coloring, the shading across the bodies. Everything is exactly like I remember it from those first figures. I mean, I know I'm saying that a lot, but again, consistency is a big thing when it comes to this line. They are very, very thorough between each figure to make sure that they all look very similar while all having their own unique qualities. And then of course, paint sculpt is really well done throughout the line. So for uh, two goofy little goat dudes here, I am very, very happy with how they turned out. It's really nice uh, to add these guys to the collection. And then as far as accessories goes, we get another instance where these guys are pretty similar to other figures in the line. And they're, again, pretty similar to the Drench figures. So those characters were the Kickstarter exclusive, and they came with uh, a fewer accessories than the other figures. Namely, they didn't have stuff for their heads, no hats or anything like that. That's not to say that these guys don't have magnets in their heads, because they still have them. You can still utilize other accessories. So here's like uh, Cheddar's Mohawk. That fits on there. Some of the other stuff won't, though, like the hats and things like that, because the horns do get in the way for some of the other stuff. But if you've got a cheddar mohawk laying around, you can use that on your fawns as well. As far as stuff specifically for them, they do come with extra heads, just like the rest of them. So you get the sort of open mouth smiling head, and then you get the sort of closed mouth smiling head, which is, generally speaking, my favorite. There is something sort of creepy devious about these, about this head sculpt in particular, so I, gen I tend to use that quite a bit. Uh, so you've got three total heads for both figures, and then we get an extra set of hands for these guys as well. So you get a set of vertically hinged uh, gripping hands for each figure. So these are, of course, Grotto's hands, but they're the same. And then their other accessories, their unique fawn accessories, are uh, specific to them, and then they are uh, the same across the board. So each of them get this sword, which has great sculpt, great paint applications, some nice bronze, gold, and silver on that. So this looks really good. It's a nice oversized sword, which is kind of a thing for a lot of these accessories where they seem a little bit larger than they need to be. And then you get this very, uh, you know, fairy tale style double flute that you've got for your fonts here. So they can hold this and put it up to their mouths as you have them frolic throughout your toy collection. I do really like this. It's a very specific kind of thing that you might expect to see with a fawn, fawn type figure. Uh, so it's really cool to get that here. And again, both of them come with everything. So each of them come with three heads, each of them come with four hands, and then you get the sword and you get the flute. So despite the fact that it's a little bit less than some of the other figures that do have, you know, things again, like the Mohawk or the hats and stuff like that, I think they've got more than enough. So yeah, there's really nothing negative for me to say about these figures because, well, over the two other videos that I've done, I've basically ranted and raved about how much I love these figures. I've posted on social media a million times about how much I love these figures. The only real negative to these is that if you didn't get them, you didn't get them because they went super, super fast. And I'm really sure that I got in just under the wire when I was ordering my own. They were there and then they were gone. Uh, I do really like them though. They are very nice. They cap off this first wave of Plunderlings really well. It's nice to get something again that's very familiar to the rest of the wave, but has its own unique thing, making these guys uh, kind of a subclass of Plunderlings so that you've got a couple other little guys that are different from your normal plunderling, so to speak. And of course, paint, sculpt, accessories, all that quality is there that we've expected from Wave 1. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what is next. So that's going to do it for this look at the Plunderlings Fawns. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.